I can't believe he's gone. He's dead. I miss him so much already. I never expected anything like this to happen. I didn't think the high priests, Herod, or the Roman authorities could touch him, let alone arrest him and execute him when he was so obviously innocent. I thought he was going to overthrow the Romans and give Israel freedom. That's what Judas thought too. Even though Jesus was obviously not going the way Jesus wanted, I still can't believe that Judas sold him out to the authorities like that. Yes, all for 30 pieces of silver so he could buy a field with a tree to hang himself from. But what about us? Where were we when Jesus needed us most? We all disappeared and hid away, just like we're still doing now. Peter denied he even knew who Jesus was three times when he was asked. I know. I feel so ashamed. Jesus was everything to me, and I deserted him. Do you remember the Sunday we came into Jerusalem, and all the people greeted Jesus as a king and deliverer? Yes, they also thought he was going to overthrow the Romans, and by the end of the week, when they saw he wasn't going to, they were screaming for his death. I. And they let that murderer Barabbas go free instead of Jesus. Some things in this world are just wrong. Do you remember, though, that Jesus told us all this was going to happen? Right down to the last detail. Yes, I do remember. But I didn't really listen, to be honest. I suppose none of us wanted to believe what he was saying. We had other ideas. And it's all come to nothing. Now Jesus is dead and the Roman soldiers and temple guards are searching for us. And if they find us, what will they do to us? I love Jesus like I never thought I could love anyone. But I don't want to die the way he did on a cross. I'm terrified. Jesus showed enormous courage and dignity in how he died. I don't think I could do the same. You think we should escape from Jerusalem and go back to fishing again? I don't see what else we can do. We gave up everything for Jesus, thinking he would change the world. And now our lives are over and it's all been a waste of time. Yes, but when Jesus told us all the things that would happen, he also told us that after three days dead, he would rise back to life. You can't seriously believe that. I don't know. Remember that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead after he'd been in the grave for four days. And what about the couple of lads and their story of meeting someone they claim was Jesus? on the way to Emmaus. And you mustn't forget about Mary and the girls going to find the grave empty the other morning and talking to someone in the garden Mary said was Jesus. That Mary Magdalene is a lovely girl but it's all a bit far-fetched. Nobody comes back from the dead, do they? Reading from John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31 That evening the disciples were meeting behind closed doors in fear of the Jewish leaders when suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. After greeting them he showed them his hands and sighed and how wonderful was their joy as they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said As the Father has sent me even so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. 
one of the disciples, Thomas, the twin, was not there at the time with the others. When they kept telling him, We have seen the Lord, he replied, I won't believe it, unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, and put my fingers into them, and place my hand into his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them and greeting them. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger into my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas said. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. But blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones told about in this book. But these are recorded so that you will believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing in him you will have life. Do you believe all this? Do you believe that Jesus really came back from the dead? I have to say that if you don't, then you're not really a Christian. But God respects doubt and always has love and time for people who are prepared to ask the big questions and look at the evidence properly. However, the death and then resurrection from death of Jesus is the heart of the Christian faith. Jesus died to pay the price of all humanity's wrongs, you and me and everyone. Then he defeated death and came back to life. And he offers this to us as a free gift. All we need to do is believe it in our hearts, and if we do, it will shine through in our lives. I wonder if you, like me, are upset sometimes by the hypocrisy of so many in the Christian church. The saying, Sunday best, is where people dress up in their smartest clothes to go to church and put on their best behaviour in front of other people, but are then often completely different for the rest of the week away from public notice. How about people going to church just for social status or because it makes them look or feel good even though they don't really believe. This doesn't happen as much as it used to, but it's still an issue. Even worse, perhaps, are holier-than-thou people, quick to judge and look down on others. With some justification, the Christian church is blamed for many terrible things in the world and down through history. This is because evil people will use the church and Christian faith as a tool to get what they want, usually power and wealth. But this isn't Christianity. The Christian faith requires sincerity. Jesus made that clear time after time, and Paul, in his letter to the Romans, said that love must be completely sincere, and so it must to be true. But we know people will not always be sincere. I beg of you guys, as the future, be true to what you believe. Be sincere in your love and your behaviour. And as the future Christian church, be witnesses to God's presence in this sad old world. And worship God in truth as well, in authentic faith that honestly recognises and works against injustice and wrong, and that lives out the Christian claim that all things work for good under God's sovereign hand. I am a lucky person in that I have seen the truth of this so many times in my own life. I came to faith in Jesus from a stance of not just doubt, but rank cynicism and scepticism, setting out to prove it was all rubbish. <laughs> how very wrong I was, and how wonderfully good God has been to me. You see, there is absolutely nothing special about me on my own, and the same can be said about the disciples. Rugged, working people, hardly, if at all, educated, 
and slow to understand. But there's something more that is not mentioned nearly enough. It's called the Holy Spirit. And if you ask God, he will give it to you too. God gives his people many gifts, but this is a big one that has had a really positive impact on my life and will do the same for you if you ask. As a, resu as a result of receiving the Holy Spirit, these ordinary men and women, the disciples, went on to live extraordinary and massively significant lives, changing the course of history and establishing the largest faith group on earth. And Doubting Thomas, as he will always be known, was perhaps the highest achiever of them all, travelling something like 5,000 miles by foot, setting up churches from Syria to southern India that still thrive today. So, it's okay to doubt sometimes, and to ask God big questions, but listen to the answers and be open for surprises. Thomas is known for his doubting because he wasn't there with the other disciples when the resurrected Jesus first appeared. Thomas missed the boat initially. Make sure you don't miss the boat too. Fellowship with other Christians is crucial. Covid has made this almost impossible for a year now, but as we hopefully move out of lockdown measures, please do take every opportunity to meet up with each other and come to church and be to youth meetings. I want to end by sending you all a challenge. I realise this may fall flat on its face, but I think it's worth a try. I've told you before how I became a Christian, and I mentioned my initial scepticism just now. How about you sharing your faith? Or, if it's the case, your doubts and uncertainties or big questions with each other? and with Carol and Andy and me, either when we get back together in meetings or on WhatsApp. Whether this works or not, I do pray that you have already, or soon will, encounter the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, and that you will be empowered to be the best you can be as a person and as an agent for God. <laughs>